Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for your word. It is the truth. We receive it, written in our heart and mind. <clears throat> thank you for the revelation of it. We will be doers of it and see the fruit of it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated if you would. We've been talking to you on conquering, and we are to conquer in all areas. We talked about many different areas, and we're now, as we began this morning, talking about conquering in your soul. Revelation 21, verse 7. He who conquers, overcome means to conquer, and to carry off the victory continually, because this is a present tense verb, which is what you and I are to do, shall inherit all things. That means it's a necessity for us to conquer and carry off the victory continually, if you are going to inherit all things. And I will be as God, and he shall be my people. We pointed out and looked at some of the scriptures we looked at this morning. You and I are made of three parts, spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, speaks of the very God of peace, sanctify you. This is what he desires to do, because this is an optative mood verb indicating this is what he desires to do. And he wants to sanctify you holy. Holy means to be perfect and complete in all respects. The total work is to be accomplished in us. And I pray your whole spirit, pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved, blameless, under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pointed out, again, this is God's desire. It's not automatic. It all is dependent upon you seeing this work be accomplished. It is God's work in you because it's a passive voice. So you have to let him have his way and accomplish this work. And you are to come to the place, being preserved is one who is being kept in the state which you come to, which is to be sanctified, complete, blameless. We're to be blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will do that work. You need to have absolute confidence that God will accomplish his total work in you as you are putting the word first place. We pointed out from 3 John, verse 2. <coughs> 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 Beloved, I wish, but it really means pray. I pray concerning all things for you to prosper and to be in health even as thy soul prospereth. We pointed out that the prosper, prospering is God's work being done in you because it's a passive voice. It is an ongoing action for you to be prospering and also to be in health, which is an active voice in the sense that his work is going to bring you to the place of being in health continually. And notice it's even as or in proportion to and as the degree that your soul prospers. And again, the soul prospering, who's, who's accomplishing that? You can't do it. It's God who's doing it because it's a passive voice again. Therefore, as your soul goes, so goes your overall prosperity and health. And we need to see the prosperity in our soul. Our soul is made up of our will, our intellect, and our emotions. Affects, the, of course, the way we choose the way we have our mind set and our understanding, what we have in our mind and where we set our mind to, the way we think, as well as the emotions. Now, we talked about the fact that our soul, because it didn't get changed when you got born from above, you just got a brand new spirit. So the soul, it has to have a work done on it. Your spirit's right, remember. It's a righteous spirit. But the soul has to see a work. And we looked at these scriptures. We'll look at them again just briefly Psalms 23, verse 3 says, He restoreth my soul. And remember, as we pointed out, this is in the polel stem, meaning to restore, refresh, repair, bring you back to the place of where you're to be. That's what God wants. It's a total restoration, affecting your will, your mind, your emotions, everything about you in your personality and the way you function because now you are a firstborn citizen of heaven and you're going to become like Jesus Christ. You are becoming like him and you're to be perfect like the heavenly father as we have seen. So that means everything that sin has done has got to be dealt with, get rid of it out of our soul. Psalms 41, 4. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, heal my soul. He wants your soul to be healed. 
and why has it gotten messed up? Because I've sinned against thee. Sin causes damage to the soul. Therefore, we have to conquer sin and we're well able to conquer sin. And remember these, as we saw them that we sing here, which we did sing this morning, but it's important to realize God is not in control of your soul. You are in control of your soul. Psalms 119, 109 makes it clear. My soul is continually in my hand. So that means your choices, your thinking, what you are doing is all in control of you, depending upon what you yield yourself to. Now, because our soul is affect our will to choose the way of the Lord, well, we have to have the mindset, mind thinking correctly to make the right choices. So the mind is a critical area. And we pointed out, Proverbs 23, 7 tells us an important thing when we understand exactly what it's saying. For as he thinketh in his heart, it says, but that's a mistake. We pointed out this is the word nefesh in the Hebrew, which means soul. Young's corrects the error. It is talking about the soul. Proof that it's not talking about the heart is because the word heart is used later down here, and it is the word heart, lab, which means heart, translated heart some 508 times. So this is saying, for as he thinketh, or as has thought, in his soul, because you're going to be thinking in your soul, so is he, because it's going to affect the way you think, the, your, the way you're viewing things, your, your, your choices that you're going to make, your whole mental perception, your motivation, all these things are going to be affected because of the way you think. We've got to think correctly. Well, that means we've got to get the mind of Christ in us. <clears throat> and we talked about that. That it's essential that you get the mind of Christ in you. And this is the mind that has been renewed to the Word. 1 Corinthians 2, 16. <clears throat> Who's known the mind of the Lord? that we may instruct him. We have to know the mind of the Lord to give any instruction to anybody because we don't want to ever tell anybody anything contrary to the word. But he says, but we have the mind of Christ. How'd they get it? Because their mind got renewed. And we pointed this out from Romans chapter 12. It is going to make a tremendous change as the word comes into you. <clears throat> be not conformed to this age, but be transformed, changed in from a species, by the renewing of your mind. And the renewing, it is a word that means the renovation, the complete change. So your mind's got to get changed so that then you can be choosing and thinking the things that God wants. Another scripture we looked at that's very important is you must realize in Luke chapter 9, as we saw, we saw in verse 23, that you and I, if any man is willing to come after him, we deny ourselves, which means we lose sight of ourselves and our own interests. We take up our cross daily, crucifying the flesh. We follow him as a disciple, doing what his word says. And then it says, whosoever will save his soul realm life. This is the word suke, not zoe, or life of God. This is the suke, which would mean, mean a soul realm directed life. He's going to destroy it, not just lose it. This is a word, which means you're going to actually destroy it because it's, it's got to walk in line with the word. Otherwise, it's going to be damaged by sin and you're going to see the destruction of the enemy coming into you. But whosoever will lose, in this sense, it means to put out of the way entirely his soul realm directed life because we're not le leading from the soul. We're going to walk by the spirit. From, he says, for my sake or because of me, more literally, the same shall save it. Therefore, we cannot walk by the flesh. We cannot walk by the soul. We're going to walk by the Spirit. When we walk by the Spirit, this is because of the Word that is, comes into us. Well, where does the Word come into us? It is written now in two places, and these are very important points to know. Hebrews 8.10 the covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I'll put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. It gets put in your heart and put in your mind. The opposite is said in 1016, where it says, the covenant that I'll make with them after those days, I'll put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. So God's writing his word in your heart and in your mind. Remember, you've got a brand new spirit 
and you got a brand new heart when you got born again, but you didn't get a new mind, you didn't get a new soul, but the Word needs to not only be written in your heart producing faith, but it also needs to be written in your mind which produces hope and also gives your mind thinking correctly in line with the Word of God so you have the mind of Christ. And that is so important. Now we talked about many ways of how our soul has been adversely affected and what we need to do. We talked about many things and we're going to just go on from there and pick up with where we left off. One scripture we do want to look at again for a moment, and this is important. Until your mind has been renewed to the Word, you want to make sure you are not taking any counsel from your soul that's contrary to the Word. Otherwise, it can be leading you down a path of destruction. Look what he says in Psalms 13, 2. How long shall I take counsel in my soul? My soul is not going to be telling me what to do unless it has the Word in it. And the Holy Spirit will be bringing the Word up to me from something that is in me but I need to not take counsel in my soul. And of course, you can tell it's not thinking right because what's it say? Having sorrow in my heart. How do you get sorrow in your heart? Because of the wrong things you've been thinking because what your soul is thinking upon or choosing or speaking, whatever it might be, it's going to get into your heart. You don't want to have th these kind of things. He has sorrow in his heart daily because of the things that have come into him. And it's the enemy that's come in and exalted over him. Well, how did the enemy get there? Through sin, remember. How did my soul get damaged? Through sin. And if I have something in my soul that's produced sorrow in my heart, and I, have, I can't be listening to anything coming out of my soul, it's going to deceive you. That's why, what do you do? You think on what the Word says and not just whatever thought, feeling, attitude, desire that comes out of the soul. This is so important. Cease to take counsel from your soul. Submit what you're thinking, your everything of your soul realm to the Word of God and choose to do what the Word says. That is absolutely essential. In Psalms 24 we see verse 3, Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall stand in His holy place? These are the ones who are going to make it to heaven. He that has clean hands, he's cleansed himself. He's got a pure heart, clean heart, and letting evil stuff, he guards his heart. He's not lifted up his soul to vanity or anything that's worthless or empty or, or anything that doesn't produce good results. Because you're to guard not only your heart, but you're also to guard your soul. And your soul is going to be affected by things you hear, things you see, all your members, whatever you're yielding to. Do not let your members yield to anything that's sin. It will pollute your soul and it will also get into your heart, nor sworn deceitfully. If he does these things, he receives the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. He is the one who's going to be able to enter in. Now, if you've gone through a lot of trauma and hurts and wounds, we must make sure that we're not letting this affect us in the way we are operating, and especially until you get all these demons cast out and you get restored, and you get free and healed up from all the negative effects. Look what he says. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I'm in trouble. Mine eyes consume us grief. He's got grief in my soul, in my belly. He's got this grief has come upon him because he's got all this trouble that's come against him. God does not want us, of course, to have that, but that's affected his soul. My life is spent with grief, my years with sign, my strength fails because of my iniquity, and my bones are consumed. That means whatever's coming in to you, it's going to affect you in all kinds of adverse ways. This is why guarding your heart, guarding your soul, making sure you're only yielding yourself to the right things. Remember in the New Testament, we're not to yield ourselves unto anything that's of sin. We're to yield ourselves to that which is in line with the Word of God and present our members unto righteousness so we walk uprightly before the Lord. That is so important. If you've had a lot of grief, sorrow, sadness, negative things that have come against you, don't yield to it. You yield to the Word of God. Think on what the Word says and don't give place to that that comes against you. And of course, the enemy has been seeking after you to bring destruction against you. 
Psalms 35, verse 4. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. All hurt that has come into your soul has been a work of the devil. It doesn't matter what, who, what vessel it might have come through, uh, you know, anybody, a person you know, close to you, a family member, uh, someone at work, someone who was a friend but didn't turn out to be a friend, you know, all kinds of things. The devil will use anybody who will yield to him to try to bring hurt. What do we do? We've got to remember, we've got to forgive, we've got to let go of those things. They're seeking after your soul. They're trying to bring a destruction against you. Because if they can bring your soul down, are you going to prosper and be in health? Are you going to see God accomplish His work in you? No. Are you going to be having the mind of Christ and thinking correctly and choosing correctly? No, you're going to be affected adversely. This is why governing your soul is so important. One thing, don't let the negative thoughts cause you to get depressed and down. This is the enemy working at you. Look what he says in Psalms 42, verse 5. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Well, that meant I let myself get depressed. I let myself get down. I got discouraged. Why art thou disquieted in me? I'm, I'm, I'm out, out of control. I'm troubled. I'm, I'm upset. Hope thou in God. And where do you get the hope from? The Word. Hope. The confident expectancy from the Word of God. Hope is to be the anchor of your soul, remember. Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. God's is your help, and he'll bring you out of that bondage. Oh my God, my soul's cast down within me. You can't let that happen to you. Do not let your soul be cast down whatsoever. Otherwise, rise up, think on the things that God wants, start rejoicing, start filling yourself up with the things of the word. Don't let yourself be depressed. The devil wants to pull you down in your soul and then you won't make the right choices and you'll think wrong and you'll who know he'll bring up make a mountain out of a molehill many times and start working you over in the mind verse 11 why art thou cast down on my soul why art thou quieted within me hope thou in god you shall yet praise him who's the health of my countenance he's going to bring his health to you the salvation is delivery is victory deliverance victory is what this word means he will bring you out of those bondages. Now, again, the devil is going to try to work against you. What has happened in the past, we must recognize whatever's come into the soul. Remember, it's got to get delivered and healed and restored and cleansed out. It's got to get restored. Psalms 54, 3. Strangers are risen up against me. Oppressors seek after my soul. They've not set God before them. Well, that means the devil will use people that aren't, don't have a God conscious whatsoever to be against you. They'll be seeking after your soul. They'll be trying to oppress you or do some kind of negative thing. Don't be moved by what they do. Just know if they don't have God before them, don't expect that they're going to be ministering the right things to you. They'll be operating through the devil, operating through them, and they can be, people can be vessels of the devil to try to do a lot of damage to you in your soul. You've got to guard yourself and not be moved by what people who don't have God set before them are trying to do to you. Another scripture that we've looked at many times in the past, Psalms 56, verse 2. Mine enemies would daily swallow, up, swallow me up, for there be many that fight against me. What time I'm afraid, I'll trust in thee. They try to bring fear. So what's the answer? No, I'm going to trust in God. I'm going to resist that fear. Remember, God's not giving you this fear, any spirit of fear whatsoever. You're going to think on what God wants. And he goes on and says in verse 5, Every day they rest my words. The enemy wants you to speak wrong words. Well, why would you speak wrong words? Because you're thinking wrong. You were thinking on something and you spoke in line with what thought you had. And you made a verbally spoke it. All their thoughts are against me for evil. Governing your mouth and governing your mind is absolutely essential if you are going to see your soul get restored. Because this is the devil coming at you. They, the enemies, gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps. They're waiting for your soul. They want you to make a mistake in your soul to give place to them so they can come in. This is how people get demonized. This is how they get uh, all types of problems emotionally, mentally, all kinds of things that come into them. 
rebellious, all these things that will affect them in the area of their soul. They're looking to get to you. And when you allow the enemies to have place, they will come in. Demons will come into you. They get into your mind, they get into your will, get into your emotions, and they will carry out a destructive work. You must be ready to deal with them. We see other scriptures that speak of in Psalms that show us also how these spirits will work against us. Psalms 57 verse 4, My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. He had all these people that were vessels of the devil speaking, doing evil things to him. Don't be moved by what people do. You may be around a lot of people at work that are evil. They speak a lot of negative things, whatever it might be. You need to be binding the demons in them. You need to be guarding yourself and protecting yourself. Thank the Father for the angels having charge over you. Make sure you're thinking on good things. You're not moved by anything that anybody says or anything that they might try to speak against you. Remember, the devil's using them. They prepare a net for my steps. And what do they want to do? They want to bring you down. My soul is bowed down. They've digged a pit before me in the midst whereof they're fallen themselves. The devil will try to use people to bring you down in the same place they're in. <laughs> don't let that happen. If they're having a pity party, you don't want to be fallen in the same way. You've got to guard yourself. They'll try to bring you into the same place that they have fallen into. Oh, we're going to guard ourselves and not give place to them. We also see another scripture that we pointed out this before. Don't think, wonder why this is happening to me because I didn't do anything to cause this. The devil can come against you with a cause because of your sin, but he can also will come against you without a cause. Here, he talks about deliver me from the enemies, defend me from those that rise up against me, deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from the bloody men. For lo, they lie and wait for my soul, the mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression. You didn't do anything to cause that to come. Nor for my sin, because you didn't sin. They're coming against you regardless. They will try to attack you. That's why you have to be on guard at all times. Even when you're walking, if you're walking right, that doesn't mean you're insulated from attacks. You're in this world. And the enemy will look for opportunities to come against you using any vessel that he can get to at any point in time. So you got to guard yourself. We also see... And we all know that violent people are rising up more and more in the world today. People that are violent, that are hateful, they'll try to be used of the enemy. Make sure you don't spark them in any way. Be wise. Don't ever get into any road rage type of a thing. <laughs> you're, you're asking for trouble. You don't let yourself get into that. O God, the proud are risen against me, and the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul and have not set thee before them. Make sure that you are always binding the demons, thanking the Father for protecting you through the angels, protecting you, having guard, guarding you, and don't get into confrontations with people over things. The, the devil will work against, through them and do evil things against you. You've got to guard yourself. And these people are all full of pride. They're all full of evil spirits that are operating in them. So make sure they're just seeking, the devil's working through them, seeking after your soul. They, they don't even know what they're doing. They're just being vessels of the enemy. So you've got to guard yourself. Another thing that's important is you need to fill yourself up with the Word of God. If you're filled with the Word of God, then you'll have the mind of the Lord to think on what He wants. You'll be influenced by the Holy Spirit. You'll be at peace your mind stayed on Him, you'll be thinking correctly if, as you have the Word in you. Psalms 107, verse 5, Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Why would your soul faint? Because you ha don't have what you need in it. If you're hungry spiritually and thirsty spiritually because you haven't filled yourself up with the things of God, your soul will faint. Because remember, the Word is to be written not only in your heart, but also in your mind. You need the Word in you. You need that daily feeding. Just as you feed yourself physically, you need to feed yourself spiritually the Word of God so your soul will not faint within you. That is important. Also, if heaviness comes upon you from the temptations, and they, it will try to come at you, don't react to it. 
my soul melts for heaviness. It will affect you. It'll pull your soul, soul, soul down. It causes it to drop down, essentially. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. So what's the answer in every situation? Think on what the word says. Hear the word. Speak the word. Do the word. Rise up. How did Jesus attack, uh, can't, uh, handle every attack that came at him? It's written. It's written. The word. That's the key in order for you to overcome all attacks that would come against you. Keep the word before you at all times. Another thing that's important is, of course, do not ever let yourself get involved in any kind of sexual sin. Not only does it affect you physically, but it also affects you in the area of your soul. Proverbs 6, verse 32. Whoso commits adultery with a woman lacks understanding. He that doeth it destroyeth his own soul, not just a physical thing that'll come into you. You can get tr transmitted sexual diseases or whatever all, ungodly soul ties get established. You're going to destroy your own soul. You've got to guard yourself. Don't let yourself fall into that. And notice, a wound and dishonor shall he get, and his reproach shall not be wiped away because of the thing that you've been involved in. You need to make sure that you're keeping yourself, guarding yourself, abstaining from any of these kind of fleshly lusts that are trying to war against your soul. They're trying, of course, to set you up for destruction. Another thing that's important in the area of the soul is making sure that you're diligent to do the things that God wants. Of course, what will the flesh want you to do? Be lazy, be slothful, be a sluggard. Well, we're not going to be slack or a sluggard. Proverbs 13, 4, the soul of the sluggard, he desires, he wants things, but he has nothing because he hasn't put what he needs to do in operation. The soul of the diligent, though, is made fat because you're applying yourself. You apply yourself to do the things that God wants. You're going to be accomplishing these things and seeing these things come to pass. We can even see the fruit of diligence. A desire accomplished is sweet to the soul because you've done what you need to do. Make sure you're accomplishing the things that you need to do. Get set the goals. Accomplish those things. Don't be one who's always wanting to get it done and then you never get it done. Get the goals. Get set. Get a plan of how you're going to accomplish things and get these things accomplished. It is sweet to the soul. That's what God, of course, He wants you to be productive in your life and all the things you do. He will bless the work of your hands, remember, as you go forth to do these things. Another thing that's important for your soul is... Always be correctable and be ready to receive any kind of uh, dis discipline or any instruction to get you on the right path. Proverbs 50, 15, 31 says, The ear that hears the reproof of life, the correction, the rebuke, he abides among the wise. We should always be correctable. Always be ready to receive reproof. Don't be resistant to it. That's a pride spirit. You know, people don't want to hear anybody tell them something. He that refuses the instruction, the discipline, the chastening, the correction, he's actually despising his own soul because he's going to continue in the, the wrong way, the, the white way that's contrary to the word. But he that heareth the reproof, he'll take heed to it. With his, he hears it and takes heed to this. He's going to get understanding. Because then you understand what, what mistakes you made. You're going to correct it. You're going to come in line and do the things that God wants you to do. This is important. You must be correctable. We find many today are not correctable. They're not willing to receive reproof when it comes to them. That's a mistake. We all need to have a humility that we're ready to receive any kind of correction that God might bring to us. Another thing is your mouth. Proverbs 18, verse 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction. We can bring destruction ourselves by saying wrong things. His lips are the snare of his soul. So you can bring your soul into bondage as a snare because of speaking wrong words. We want to think about what we speak before we speak. Don't speak your opinions. Speak the things that God would want you to speak. Only speak things that are going to bring edification, don't let any corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. You only want to speak right words that are going to minister life. 
Think about how you say things. Say things in a right way. Have, have wisdom in the way you speak when you're speaking to people. So you're going to be bringing the, speaking the right thing. And don't be speaking a bunch of negative things. It will snare your soul. In fact, it even tells us what to do in Proverbs 21, verse 23. Whoso keepeth the word shamar, meaning guards his mouth and his tongue, he is guarding his soul from troubles. Because what you're speaking is going to affect you and your soul. It does have an effect upon you. Don't just think that whatever you say, it doesn't have any effect. No, it does. You're, you're, you're going to be guarding your soul if you watch the things you speak, because what you speak is going to have an adverse effect upon you. Only speak right things out of your mouth. That is so important. Another thing, do not be in fellowship with people that are those who are angry people. You're going to minister to them, but we're talking about fellowship. Look what it says in Proverbs 22, 24. Make no friendship with an angry man. I will minister to anybody, anywhere, any place. But we're not going to make friends of an angry man. No thanks. <laughs> You're not going to be my friend. I'll, I'll give you the word and share the word with you, call you to repentance. And with, it even says even the furious man, you don't even go to him. Stay away from him. You're going to pray for him, bind the demons in him, thank the send something to him, maybe through a, other means, but you're not even supposed to go near a furious man. You want to stay away from him. That is wisdom. Because what will happen? Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to your soul. This is why you can get a transfer of spirits by being in fellowship with the wrong people. Separate yourself from those people. I don't care who they are. It doesn't matter who they are. You don't want to be around people that are going to bring evil things to you. Remember what it talks about over in New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, in verse 33. Be not deceived. Evil companionship. Communication really means companionship. Corrupts your good manners. It'll corrupt you because of being around the wrong kind of person. The transfer of spirits will come. Effects will affect you. It will affect your soul and cause damage to come unto you. Also, hearing wrong words will affect you in, from a doctrinal standpoint. This is why we don't want to listen to anybody that's going to be speaking things that are contrary to the Word. Remember, they had a problem in Acts. This was when a sect of the Pharisees that were still following the Old Testament, they said it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. Is that what we do in the New Testament? No. All these physical things were a type of the spiritual realities. The spiritual circumcision is now getting a brand new spirit and new heart on the inside of us. And the law now has changed to the law of Christ and following the commandments of Jesus. But these guys were still following this way. And so they had quite a, uh, a dispute about this. Much disputing. There was quite a, quite a bit of contention that came. And the end, end result was down in verse 24. He said, For as much as we've heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. Am I going to listen to someone that's going to speak things contrary to the word of God? No. Notice those words, they're going to have effect. Subverting your soul and this interesting word, this word means like, like to pack up baggage in order to carry it away to another place. Otherwise, you get moved to another place. If you're listening to the wrong things, they could move you away from the truth, and now you're over here believing something over here that's false. Don't let anything move you or turn you or carry you away out of the way of the Word of God. And it will affect you with their words. This is why you only want to hear things that are coming in line with the Word of God. It's affecting your soul, the way you think. Doctrine is important, and you've got to guard yourself so lies don't come unto you. Another thing, remember we talked about the fact that you've got to keep your soul realm in line with the Word of God. <clears throat> we see over here in Luke 14, 26, he says, If any man come to me and hate not his father, mother, wife, children, brother, sisters, yea, in his own life, also he cannot be my disciple. 
Now, it's not literally hating them, of course. What it's talking about is you put these ahead of him. If you put anything about your father, your mother, your wife, children, brethren, sisters, or even your own soul realm directed life, you're not going to be able to be a disciple. Who are the disciples? Only the ones that continue in his word. Only the ones that are doing what he commands. So therefore, you've got to remember, put out of the way entirely the soul realm directed life. We're not going to walk after that. We're going to walk according to the word in spirit. Those are the ones that will be a true disciple of the Lord. And of course, also, if you won't bear your cross, bear his cross, crucify on the flesh and come after me, which is what the answer is, doing what the word says, you cannot be his disciple as well. And we also see down in verse 33. So likewise, whoever be of you that forsakes not all that he has, in the sense that you're putting God first place in everything and not letting anything else direct you in what you're doing, he cannot be my disciple. You need to not let anything come before you following the Lord. And how will it try to affect you? It'll affect you in your soul. That's why your soul has to be submitted to the Word. What does the Word think? Before you choose, am I choosing things that are in line with the Word of God of what God wants me to do? Instead of just my will, what I want to do. Anything that proceeds from an I, 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 me, me mentality will be coming from the human nature, from a soul realm directed life. We're not going to walk in those ways. Those are ways that are going to lead to destruction. We also see another thing in Hebrews chapter 12 in verse 3. Consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, talking about Jesus, all the attacks coming against him. And the contradiction was the people speaking against him, the opposition, the rebellion. When people do that, just give them the word, speak the word. Don't let it get to you and wear you down, though, lest you be wearied in your souls, more literally, because the word mind is a mistake. Notice it's the word suke. And it literally says, when you look at it in the Greek here, the way it me here is talking about, that you may be wearied here or in your soul being, having been faint. Being faint. This means a part, it's a participle, having come to the place of being faint. Therefore, it's like Young's brings it out very good. You may not be wearied in your souls being faint. Don't let yourself get faint. Why would I get faint? Because I don't have nourishment in me. I don't have the word in me. I am faint in my mind because I get discouraged or I get down or I get depressed or I get double-minded. All these kinds of things. Or they're attacking me by criticizing me. When people come against you, just have the word, ready to give them the word. Give them the truth. They're going to try to come against you. There'll be opposition that will come against you, especially when you're bringing forth truth and they're in error, you're going to have the opposition. Be ready to speak forth. And those ones that are sinners as well out there in the world will speak against you. Well, don't get wearied in your soul being faint. Instead, you'd be ready to just give forth the Word of God and do the things that He wants because you're going to follow after Him. Another thing you have to watch Remember that 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from. This means to hold yourself off, hold oneself off from fleshly lusts. That do what? That war against the soul. Remember, your soul is to have the word in it so you're having the mind of Christ, the word in your heart, the word in your mind, so you'll be thinking correctly, choosing correctly. At the same time, what's going to be trying to work against your soul? Fleshly lusts. Do not let yourself, and many times they will rise up, especially if you're kind of a weak point or some situation, circumstance occurred, and it kind of weakened you a little bit, and so those, they'll take advantage of it. Those fleshly lusts will try to come against you. Notice what they're doing. They're warring against the soul, trying to get the ascendancy in your life so you'll choose to yield to the lusts instead of choosing the way of the Word of God. And it's interesting, it says you've got to have your focus on who you are. As strangers, that's what we are. What is a stranger? 
a stranger is a foreigner who lives in a place without citizen, right of citizenship. That's what you are. What does that mean? Where are you a citizen of? You're citizens of heaven. You are in this place without a right of citizenship. You're a foreigner because you're born from above. Your spirit is from above. Therefore, you're going to operate according to above. You're not going to operate according to this place because you're not a citizen of this place from a spiritually standpoint. And the pilgrims, what's a pilgrim though? Well, that's one who comes from a foreign country into a city or land to reside there by the side of the natives. You're here residing by all these people that <laughs> they're not born from above. You're here being an ambassador for Christ. You're representing Jesus. You are in this place. But from the standpoint spiritually, this is a foreign place. Your spirit didn't come from this place. Your spirit came from heaven. Therefore, you must realize and always realize you are a stranger to this place as far as citizenship. You're a pilgrim. You're a sent here as an ambassador for Christ. You're representing him. You're not going to be a court. You're not of this world whatsoever. Remember, we're not from this world. We're from above. Abstain from fleshly lusts. So th if you keep your focus on who you are and living as one from heaven, you'll know anything that comes from any of the, the lusts, anything from the human nature, it's trying to take you down. It's warring against your soul. So you got to be guarding yourself. How am I going to do it? I'm going to think about who I am and what I am, where I come from and what I'm living according to. I'm living as a citizen of heaven. Not, I'm not living as anything on this earth whatsoever. You're going to live according to His ways. Also, when you're around these people that are a problem, notice what it says you're to do here. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 7. It speaks about Lot, who was declared a righteous one, just Lot. God delivered just Lot, but notice, he was being vexed with the filthy, the lustful, unbridled lust, lasciviousness, this, this unbridled lust of the manner of life and conduct of the wicked ones. And who are the wicked ones? The ones who break through the restraint of law and gratify his lust. Now, this could be, remember, people of the world, but this really is talking about Christians because remember that who, who has a strain of restraint of law? Not the born, on people that aren't born again, born from above. Who has law, as far as we do, right? So if they have broke from the restraint of law and they're gratifying their lust, that really is implying about a Christian who's not walking in line with the, the law of Christ. He's yielding to his lust. So in our sense, Anybody that would be, whether it's a person of the world or it's a Christian, whoever it might be, if they are being a vessel to vex you with their lustful manner of life or conduct or behavior or their lasciviousness in the sense that they think they can do anything they want, those are people not to be around. They've cast off the restraint of law and they have now are gratifying their flesh. flesh. That's, you, you want to watch that you don't let them affect you. The righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. When you see people doing evil things, don't be moved. Don't let it upset you. Pray for them. Look for opportunities to witness to them. But he's seeing and hearing. It was a vexing his righteous soul. It's going to affect you. For instance, you hear all these swear words. You hear these people with these terrible evil jokes and stuff like that. You know, it's vexing your righteous soul. First of all, you shouldn't want to hear those things. Don't be listening to them. Guard yourself. But nonetheless, when they do put this forth, you're going to, it's going to vex you and have an effect upon you. Guard yourself. Think on good things. Don't let it move you with all the things they do. Don't be moved by the things that people are doing. That is important. In 1 Peter... Chapter 2, verse 18. This tells you how to function in, in, the, in this world, especially in work situations. Servants, be subject, be in subjection to your masters with all fear, godly fear. Not only to the good, 
oh, he's a good guy, he's, a good, he's nice to me, and the gentle, who are fair and mild or whatever, but also to the crooked, the perverse, the wicked, the unfair ones as well. You still be in subjection to them because you're doing your work unto the Lord. You're not going to be getting upset. It's not going to do you any good. You just do your work unto the Lord. You're going to still be in subjection to them, but you live as one who is from heaven, remember. But nonetheless, if you're around people that are crooked, that are perverse, that are wicked, that are unfair, you do your work unto the Lord. You keep your eyes on Him and do what is right. And took, pray for the people, look for opportunities to witness to them, but don't let it affect you. See, it can affect your soul if you start getting an attitude and you start getting negative and you start you know, getting mad or upset. No, you stay at peace at all times and do your work under the Lord, be a vessel for God to flow through, witness the people when you have opportunity to minister unto them. Now, another thing that's important is anything that's unrighteous is sin, and it's trying to take you down, and it's trying to affect you in the area of your soul. Romans chapter 2. We see over here in verse 5 where it says, Through hardness and impenitent heart, people treasure up themselves wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who's going to render to every man according to his deeds. So to them who by patient continuance, which means steadfast doing good, your good doing, your good works, you're seeking for glory, honor, and immortality, eternal life. Otherwise, you're just going to do what's right in every situation. That's the way you need to live. Don't let anything cause you to react in a negative way. It's affecting your soul. You're going to live, remember, as one from heaven. That is important. But to them that are contentious, do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. So don't get contentious. Don't get in arguments. Don't get in strife. Don't get in attitudes. Stay in peace. Keep a rejoicing spirit. Do everything unto the Lord. Don't be murmuring, complaining, griping, those kind of things. That's all a mistake, even if the people are, are not walking right. Otherwise, you can stay in peace at all times if you handle things properly and not be moved by what people do. Those ones that don't obey the truth, obey unrighteous, what's going to happen? They're going to get indignation and wrath and tribulation and anguish upon the, every soul of man that does evil. They're not going to get away with it, that's for sure. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good. So you do good every time, regardless of what other people do. Remember, we give people what they have need of. Otherwise, it's going to damage your soul. If you get into any kind of negativism, unforgiveness, resentment, holding grudges, critical, backbiting, you know, whatever, speaking negatives, holding, you know, grudges against people, get bitter about things. It's going to damage your soul. You've got to guard yourself. Remember, you are citizens of heaven. You are living as citizens of heaven. You are a pilgrim in this place. <laughs> you are a not, this is not where your home is and you're not of this place. So don't be moved by the things that come at you and don't react negatively. Otherwise, it will damage your soul. Now, at the same time, we're in a battle in this place because the devil is going to be trying to work at you to try to get to you. So in this battle that's coming against you, what are you going to do? You're going to make sure that you're doing the right things before the Lord. First Peter chapter 2. Since you are now born from above, what are you supposed to do? You're going to walk as one who submitted to the great shepherd. We were as sheep going astray, but we're not going astray any longer. Now you're returned unto the shepherd, the one who's leading you and guiding you, and the bishop, which means the overseer of your souls. You're going to be led and overseen by the Lord. He's the one that's over your soul. So you're choosing the right thing. You're not going to go astray anymore. You're going to represent Him. 
You're going to overcome in everything. Remember, what do we do in regards to people that have done evil? See, this is important because so many people get beat up by what happens in relationships because they didn't handle it properly according to the Word. If you do these scriptures, you will not get hurt and beat up and down by the enemy. You love your enemies. You don't retaliate. You don't hold old grudges. No. You bless them that curse you. You don't repay evil to people. No way. You do good to them that hate you. Doesn't matter. Well, they don't deserve anything. So what? It's irrelevant. Just do good to them anyway. Pray for them that despitefully use you. They insulted me. Oh, you're going to hold that now in you? It's going to damage your soul. No, it doesn't matter whether they insult you or not. Just give them what they have need of. Quit reacting out of a negative attitude of what they did to me. Anything out of the me, me, I, I, I will damage your soul. It'll damage you. And as it says also, anybody that's treated you abusively, they've been abusing me. Don't react to it. Forgive them immediately. Let it go. Pray for them. Minister to them. Do whatever you can do to try to represent what God wants for you. Don't get an attitude against them. Your soul will be damaged because you'll have an attitude. You'll be, in, you know, hold, hold, you'll be against that person in some way. Can't do that. Someone has been using you. Someone's been reviling you. Someone's even accusing you falsely. <laughs> they accuse you falsely. You just try to do what you can to bring forth the truth, but make sure you're right before God because that's what counts. Don't get attitudes. If you get attitudes, it has now affected your soul. Well, who would like you to get attitudes and take you down? The devil. So this is the devil working through people. Remember that you may become the sons of your father. Well, that means if you're not doing verse 44, you haven't met the conditions to become the sons of your father because this is a conditional statement. You're not automatically the sons of your father unless you're doing verse 44. And furthermore, remember where we're headed to. Not be you therefore perfect, you shall be perfect because this is a future tense verb as Young brings it out right. You shall therefore be perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. You're to be perfect. All these people think we'll never be perfect. They don't believe the word. They're just reasoning in their mind. Well, I can never be perfect. It's all lies. You're going to be perfect. You shall be perfect as your Father is in heaven perfect because you're going to do what's right. You're going to operate as a citizen from heaven and you're not going to operate according to the flesh <coughs> And you're going to guard your soul and not let the devil have place and get to you. So this brings us to another point. We got to guard our soul. Guarding your soul is essential. Why have people gotten all beat down, hurt, wounded, angry, frustrated, depressed? Well, they've let all this stuff affect them and what's happened in their life. They get down on because even what they haven't done, and they get down on themselves. Now you need to forgive yourself. Not hold on to it. It's not going to do you any good to hold on to failures or mistakes that you've made. You correct your mistakes and go on. Not sit there and beat yourself down. Look what he says in Deuteronomy 4.9. Only take heed to thyself and keep guard, shamar, thy soul diligently. You guard yourself. <clears throat> Lest thou forget the things I have seen, lest you depart from your heart all the days of your life. You teach them your sons and your sons' sons. So take heed and then guard your soul diligently. So you're only thinking correctly, you're only choosing correctly, you're only letting anything in your soul that's going to be in line with the Word of God. If it doesn't minister peace, if it doesn't minister joy, if it doesn't minister love, if it doesn't minister the things of God, you want to cast it down. You don't want to give place to it. Jesus didn't get beat up by all the attacks coming against him. He guarded himself. That's what you and I must do. We're going to guard ourselves at all times. 
This is why Proverbs 4 really tells us some important things. Proverbs chapter 4 in verse 20 says, My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. So you get the word in you. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Well, that means all my members are yielded to get the word in me, and I'm keeping it in here, so I'm not letting the enemy get to me to take it out. Keep guard them in the midst of your heart. Their life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Guard. Well, this actually this is the word natsar, which really means watch over in a sense. Watch over your heart with all diligence. Don't let anything. And what gets into your heart? All through the gates, all your members, whatever you're thinking, whatever you're speaking, whatever you're hearing, whatever you know, you're seeing, all these things can affect you. For out of it are the issues or the outgoings of life. You've got to guard yourself. In the New Testament, he takes the word, he writes it in your heart, and he writes it in your mind. So your heart then will have the right motivation, will have the word in it to direct you and guide you in all you want to do. And your soul gets the word in it so you think correctly and so you choose correctly. So the devil wants to take you down in the soul. He wants you depressed. He wants you hurt. He wants to beat you up. He wants to vex you. He wants to get you in grief. He wants you to get you upset. All these different things where we saw this. No. Do not let that happen unto you. That is the tool of the enemy trying to work against you and take you down. You've got to guard yourself at all times, and that's so important. Another thing we need to do, Luke chapter 21, verse 19. In your patience possess ye your souls. So you are to possess control of the soul, by what? Being steadfast. Steadfast and constant, enduring, whatever, anything comes. Steadfast on the word. And where is this? This is in the mind, in, the, in, in your soulish realm. You can't let yourself get out of sorts. You've got to be steadfast on the word. Don't let anything come in and penetrate into you. And that is so important because many people, they just let the enemy come in and it brings all kinds of destruction against them. This is why you've got to come to the place of having a single-minded way that you're going to function. Look at Philippians 1, verse 27. Philippians 1, verse 27. He says this, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, because you're going to operate in spirit, with one soul, not mine, it's suke if notice, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Well, if I'm going to have be one spirit and I'm going to be one souled, then the word's going to be running me in everything. Anything that's contrary to that, ah, it's got me off track. And this is what the devil will do. Remember, all the enemies are arrayed against you. They're lying in wait for your soul. They're looking for opportunities to get to you. They'll use anybody, any situation, any circumstance even loved ones, friends, whatever it might be, anybody to try to get to you. Guard yourself. You've got to always be on guard at all times in your life. Hebrews chapter 6 tells us an important point in verse 19 where hope, which is the word in your mind having a confident expectancy, hope we have as the anchor of the soul. If your soul is anchored, it's not moving. Well, if it's moving, then we haven't been steadfast. We haven't been one-souled. Both sure, here firm, and steadfast, stable, and fast. God wants to bring stability into you. You can't let unstableness come into your soul. Be wishy-washy. Be on often. One, one day you're on, and the next day you're off. You can't allow that to happen. That is a work of the enemy to take you down. And also, are you going to see your prayers get anywhere? Take hold of promises if you're double-minded, double-souled? No. Look what it says in James chapter 1, here in verse 7. If we back up one verse. When you are praying, you let him make a demand. This is the word iteo, which you do when you're praying, in faith. Nothing wavering. I'm not going to waver. 
He that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the t wind and tossed. He's all over the place. He's not single-minded and set. Let not that man think that he shall take hold of Lombano anything of the Lord. And what's the problem? He's two-souled. Double-minded means two-souled. You got to be single-minded. And notice what the, the double-minded or the two-souled guy is. He's unstable. He doesn't have stability. God wants stability in you. And the only way you're going to have stability is by the word set in your mind, in your soul, so you choose the way of the Lord. You've got the mind of Christ. You've set yourself. You're only going to do the thing. You're gonna, that means you're going to take every thought captive. And you're going to resist any of the, abstain from any, any fleshly lusts that are warned against your soul. You're going to cast that down. You're going to crucify that flesh daily. You're not going to let anything get to you. As you learn to be one sold, you're on your way to victory. The devil's not going to be able to get to you. But remember, he's lying in wait for your soul. He's looking for opportunities to get to you. And any time anybody comes along and does something that kind of can spark you to go off track, off the word, uh, he's made some inroads into you and caused some damage to your soul. That's where we got to guard ourselves. James chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 8. Draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sin for sinners or sinful ones, this means. It's talking about the one who is a sinful one's adjective, plural. That's why we say that. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. What's the double-minded? The two-souled guy. Now that also tells you why you got to be have a, a single-souled attitude on everything. Because it's going to damage your heart. Will your heart remain pure if you're two-souled? No, because your soul is one of the gates affecting your heart. This is why you got to be single-souled, single-minded. The double-minded guy, he, has, he didn't have a pure heart anymore. You purify your hearts by, just like you cleanse your hands by dealing with the sin, you purify your hearts by getting rid of the two-souledness. You got to get single-minded. So in your steadfastness, you possess your souls. You're to possess control of the soul. That soul the devil's trying to get to it. That's where the battleground is. The war is going on in the soulish realm. You've got to be ready to deal with any and all attacks that are coming against it. And what's going to be the key is getting the word in you. Back in James chapter 1, verse 21, lay, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness, superfluity of naughtiness, receive with meekness the engrafted word. And that means the implanted word which has the power, or is able, has the power to save your souls. Get your soul restored, rescued, healed, restored to health, preserved. The Word, because the Word implanted in you, when you think on that, when you choose to do that, when you respond to that, you speak that, you won't be causing damage to your soul. So this is the key. And of course, when you hear the word, you've got to be a doer of it. It goes on and says, become doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And you deceive yourself if you do not do the word you hear. That is so important. Another thing is, we got to purify our soul. Remember, God is going to do this work to bring you to the place of being one souled. Your soul is to be blameless under the coming of the Lord, remember. 1 Peter chapter 1, down here in verse 22. Seeing you have purified your souls. How am I going to cleanse my soul? By obeying the truth. Through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see you love one another with a pure heart fervently. The key for your souls to be purified is obedience to the truth. That means you've got to have the Word before you. And that means when something comes to you, you're going to think, what does the Word say? If you, don't, if you respond and react not thinking what the Word says, and you're responding out of something that came at into your mind, or trying to influence you to react negatively from the human nature, well, now, you, now you've damaged your soul. 
And also, it'll damage your heart too. You won't have a pure heart because it'll affect you in your heart until you come to the place of dealing with that. So therefore, we've got to come to the place that we're going to do what is right in the sight of the Lord. He does not want you to have any instability in your life. There's another scripture we want to look at for a moment. <clears throat> we saw what it talked about uh, with Lot in 2 Peter 2, but come down now to verse 14. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. Beguiling means to deceive. He basically, he's deceived him, enticed him, allured him in unstable souls. This is an unstable, unsteadfast soul. Well, that's what someone who's two-souled. That's someone who's not established possessing their soul by being steadfast on the Word. That's someone who doesn't have the Word in their mind and they haven't set their will to choose the things of God. That's why we set our will to do the things that God wants you to do at all times in your life. So, what does God want? He wants to bring this soul. Uh, you actually, you're, you're actually imprisoned if you have an unstable soul because you've got something in you that's causing you not to be right. So, what's the answer? We've got to come out of the prison. This is where deliverance comes into play. Psalms 142, verse 7, that is, verse 7. Bring my soul out of prison. Your what? Your soul. It's imprisoned if it's got anything evil in it that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall encompass me about, thou shalt deal bountifully with me. God wants your soul to come out of prison. And the devil wants you to be in prison by bringing evil, negative things into you. Well, it's going to be a battle. It is a fight because you're in this world dominated by the devil and all the evil spirits that are lying in wait for your soul, looking to ways to get to you. So Psalms 55 is important to realize, verse 18. He has delivered my soul in peace from the battle. If you don't have peace, then you still are involved in the battle until you get rid of it. Because when God delivers your soul, you'll be in peace from the battle that was against you. you. Say, well, I thought I got rid of this problem. Well, there's many with, many with me, which are the enemies that are, or gods or angels that are going to work on your behalf, but there can be many against you. Remember, many that say of your soul, there's no help for you in God. Therefore, the angels are going to go into operation and, con and they're going to confront all these evil spirits that are saying there's no help for you, the many that are against you, and you are going to fight this battle and God's going to deliver you in peace. He wants you to be at peace at all times. He says, peace I leave you, peace I give you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And that's because you're going to guard yourself. You, God wants you to be at peace at all times in your life. We're going to guard our soul. Another scripture that goes along with guarding your soul, Proverbs 22, verse 5. Thorns and snares are in the way of the froward, the ones that are walking wrong. But he that, he that doth keep his soul will be far from them. Shamar again, the word guard. You guard your soul, the enemy's thorns and snares won't get to you. You're going to guard yourself. One of the critical things is for you to guard yourself on a daily basis. If you don't have your guard, if you let your guard down, he's going to get to you. Remember, he's watching. His, we've seen the scriptures where the enemy sharpens his eye on you. <laughs> yeah, he knows what you're doing. He's watching you. You're not going to fool him. He knows what you do and what you don't do. He watches you. He's trying to trap you. He's trying to deceive you. He's trying to bring you down. Well, you're not going to let that happen because you're going to get, you're going to possess your soul by being steadfast on the word and you are going to conquer everything that comes against you. And that's so important. So we're going to escape out of the, out of the prison, out of the snare of the enemy. And this is where, again, Guarding your soul is important, getting the word in you, dealing with the sins, but also we need to cast out the demons. Psalms 124, verse 7, Our souls escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. 
the snares broken and we're escaped. How did we get out of this? Our help's in the name of the Lord, because you're going to speak in the name of the Lord. You're going to cast out these demons. God is going to liberate you and set you free. Your soul is going to come out of the snare of the enemies. You're going to be delivered. That's where you have to cast out the demons. If there's demons that are continually warring at you in your mind, you've got some work to do. Keep casting out. Stay aggressive. Don't get wearied. Just keep on doing it. There's many, maybe to drive out. It's a little by little process, remember. You keep on pressing through until you see the victory. Also, you keep learning of the Word. Another scripture we didn't look at, but it's a good one to think about because God brings rest to your soul, not turmoil. We shouldn't have turmoil. That's the devil coming at you. Matthew 11, 28. Come into me, all you labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. That's what he wants for us. Take my yoke upon me. That's what couples you together with him and learn of me. His word. For I'm meek and lowly in heart. You'll find rest unto your souls. That's what he'll bring for you. You're going to have rest. My yoke's easy and my burden's light. Anything that's putting heavy burdens upon you or anything, that's not God. You just do the word. The enemies will try to come against you with all these things, but you'll find rest unto your souls as you learn of him and do what he says. As you walk in his ways, you're going to conquer, you're going to overcome, and you're going to see victory that's going to come forth. Another scripture that goes along with this, showing the fact that you can be at rest through the word in you is Psalms 25. Verse 12. What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Having the fear of God means if I walk in God's ways, I'll be blessed. But if I don't, curses are going to come upon me because God's word is the judge, remember. So therefore, I'm not going to walk contrary. What's going to happen when you're taught in the way that he chooses? Not you choose. Remember, you're not choosing your way. You're submitting unto him. If you're going to be taught in the way he chooses and you walk in it, his soul shall dwell at ease. That's what God wants. If you're going to swell, your soul's going to dwell at ease. Everything's going to be good. He wants you to have peace. All that comes that's contrary to the fruit of the Spirit operating in you, he wants you long suffering, not getting impatient and frustrated. He wants you uh, having joy. Not being all upset and, you know, negative things coming at you. He wants you to have the peace and your soul dwelling at ease. So we come back to two scriptures as we close. Proverbs 23. This is a key. As you're thinking in your soul, so are you. So your thinking processes is critical. Thinking about yourself, you got to think correctly. Thinking about the situations that you're dealing with and how you respond. Thinking about how, how you're going to de do so, a situation. Is it going to do it in line with God's word or are you just going to do whatever you feel like doing? You got to do it God's way. As you think in your soul, so are you. And remember what it says in 3 John Verse 2, I pray concerning all things that you are to be prospering and to be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Everybody wants to prosper and everybody wants to be in health. But the word declares it's even as or in proportion to the prosperity of your soul. Again, as the soul goes, so goes your prosperity and your health. You're good, have a good journey. We've got to make sure we're doing what he says. Prosperity of your soul is because you've got it purified, you've got it cleansed, you are, have it filled up with the Word of God, you have conquered all areas of sin, you're guarding it, you're not giving place to anything, you're possessing control of the soul by being steadfast on the Word. You come to the place of not being unstable, but stable. He wants you to be stable, not double-souled, not wavering, not, you know, being over all over the place in your mind, being single-minded, single-souled. That's where God is going to bring you to. And, of course, that means you've got to get the mind of Christ in you. 
but you got to activate it by thinking on what the Word says. Many people know the Word, but then they don't yield to it. <laughs> and they wonder why they have all kinds of problems. Having the Word in you also must be activated in your life by choosing to do what the Word says in every situation. If you do that, you're going to come to the place of abiding in peace. Nothing's going to disturb you. Nothing's going to get you into turmoil because you're living as a firstborn child, a citizen of heaven. You're living according to God's ways. You get this established in you and you get single-souled and get established in possessing your soul, you're on the way to victory. And also that's important as you cast out the demons because if you don't have a soul possessed in line with the Word, when you cast the demons out, what's going to happen if you yield to the temptations? They're going to come right back in. You're going to be in worse shape. So this is mandatory while you're going through deliverance. Otherwise, you won't retain your deliverance. We've seen lots of people that haven't retained their deliverance because they didn't possess the area of their soul through the Word of God. That is mandatory. Say this, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the Word of God that brings revelation that I'm to guard my soul, I'm to possess my soul, I'm to make sure that I am one-souled. My soul is to be guarded. I am not going to give place to anything in my soul that's contrary to the Word. I will conquer sin. I will not take counsel in my soul that's contrary to the Word. I will not allow these lusts of the flesh to affect me that are warring against my soul. I will cast them down. I will not give place to them. I'm going to live according to the Word of God as a firstborn citizen of heaven. And I am not going to let that soul be affected. I will guard my soul. And as I guard my soul, I'll also be guarding my heart so no evil will come into it. As the words written in my heart and in my mind, so I have the mind of Christ and I take my thoughts captive and I set my will to choose what God wants and I do not let human nature of the flesh rise up and war against my soul and get me to take wrong actions or wrong thoughts. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm going to guard my soul. And I'm going to come to the place where I'm one soul in line with the Word of God. I'll always stay in peace and I'm going to be led by the Holy Spirit who's going to bring the Word up to me and show me what to do. I will think, what does the Word say that I'm going to do so that I'm submitted unto the Word of God and I don't give place to the attacks of the enemy. I will resist all attacks of the enemy with the Word of God and I will cast out all these evil spirits to drive them out of my soul so it gets healed and set free. At the same time, I will make sure that my soul is one soul in line with the Word so the evil spirits will not ever come back in. Thank you for restoring my soul. Thank you for healing my soul. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for bringing me to place of having a stable soul and walking in your ways so that I will see your prosperity and your health and your victory come forth in my life. I thank you that I am conquering in the soul so that I will be one soul and be at peace at all times. In Jesus' name, amen. This is where you're headed. Now you might say, I haven't been anywhere close to that. Well, we got work to do. Get your mind renewed. Keep casting out. Anything that comes at you, learn and take deal with that. Maybe something of correction's coming to you, receive the correction. Don't sit there and be against your soul, which is what you're making a mistake. Otherwise, all those things, those scriptures are so important. Do them and your soul will come out 
victorious in every situation. Father, thank you for all you brought forth. We'll be hearers and doers of this word. We will conquer in the soul so that then we will inherit all things. We'll be prospered. We'll be blessed. We'll see you accomplish everything. And we'll stay at peace at all times and see you lead and guide and direct us. Thank you for your great work that you're accomplishing as we will be one sold in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah.